So, yeah, that's actually the second presentation about this topic, but I will focus more on the implementation of this technology in the financial sector. <laughs> so, um, first I would like to explain to you how transaction ledgers work currently. So, our economic system is very centralized, so we have a single point of control. This is a trusted central entity that does all the regulations. So current accounting systems have not achieved a high efficiency due to this high involvement of the regulators. In order to validate each transaction, this central entity has to verify if all uh, regulatory requirements are met in order to prevent any illegal activities. And to achieve this, many transactions are still manually processed, which leads to this lack of efficiency and resilience. So an example would be the high dependence that we, that we have on banks, for example. If a bank has a malicious intent, that could have a huge impact on the clients, um, leading to serious financial problems. So we could solve this problem introducing the distributed ledger technology in the financial sector. First, I would like to explain to you what it is. Um, distributed ledgers operate a set of synchronized ledgers that are managed by many or just one entity. It is an asset database that is shared across a network. And this network consists of many nodes. These nodes are shown here on this picture. And this can be deployed by institutions or jurisdictions and they have the uh, responsibility to update the ledger. So, in order to validate a transaction, for example, we need a mechanism that is called consensus. That is, when all the nodes in the network agree on a current state of the ledger. And that's why we will decentralize, because now we have a central entity that regulates everything and now we will have many nodes that have to agree to uh, a, a, in a transaction. So the security of this network and accuracy is maintained cryptographically using keys and signatures. And yeah, how, how can we apply this distributed ledger technology in the financial sector? This can be used, for example, for payment, settlement, and clearing. And there are a few promises associated to this new technology, for example, that we have a higher efficiency, robustness, and resilience in the financial sector. So these pictures illustrate an example of how this would work. For example, person A wants to send money to person B. This transaction in the network is seen as a block. And the block is broadcasted to every participant, every node in the network. And if there is a consensus, if everyone agrees, the block can be attached to the rest of the blockchain and person B receives the money. And that's why this is much more efficient than our current processes that are uh, very manual still. So another problem of our current um, system is that we still rely on a lot of paper documents which uh, leads to larger settlement times and lack of efficiency. For example, to provide finance to exporters, we need first a importer's bank that issues a letter of credit, and then against it, a exporter's bank would advance funds. This trans these transactions have to be validated manually, and that needs a lot of more time than with the distributed ledger. Another example of how we can use this new technology is with smart contracts. Smart contracts are contracts whose terms are recorded in a computer language. So they can enable, for example, insurance monies to be transferred virtually immediately after an event. For example, travel insurance, could, uh, the money could be transferred to the client uh, immediately after the delay to a flight. So, all these processes would be much faster. And uh, to execute these smart contracts, we need a platform. 
And this platform where they can be hosted would be then the blockchain. So after the consensus, after, after all the nodes agree on a state, um, the code of the contract would become self-governing and self-executing, which would uh, replace the need for wider contracts, checks, and balances. So this picture illustrates how that works. We would first need a physical contract and a blockchain, and that can result in a smart contract. That is a software pro program on the distributed ledger that allows a secure record of all, all contracts and, transa and transactions. But there is still a need of regulators and banks and insurers that act as custodians and validators. Here you can see a few advantages of these smart contracts. This is, for example, lower operational overheads and costs, uh, reduced administration and service costs, um, automation and ease of compliance and reporting, or here that is much faster, simpler, simpler and hassle-free. At this new this technology is at a very early stage, so all the benefits and risks that I'm mentioning here are still very theoretical. However, there are a few limitations that are already known, and these are mentioned, for example, in this paper article that claims that smart contracts can be fully automated. This is a problem, for example, because to execute these contracts, a few conditions of the blockchain have to be met. And in case for, uh, of licensing and digital rights management, it's still not known how we would handle with them. So why did it come to a, a huge interest on this new technology? Uh, an important point is to mention that people are interested in saving money introducing this new technology. So I've brought here two examples. Um, the Center that Santander Bank claims that blockchain technologies could reduce banks' infrastructural costs by 15 to 20 billion dollars a year by 2022. And the Goldman Sachs says that blockchain technology could streamline the clearing and settlement of cash securities, saving capital markets two billion dollars in the US and six billion dollars a year globally. So that's actually a lot. And People are very interested, interested in that. So here I have a summary of the advantages of distributed ledger technology on financial markets. First would be, as I previously said, the reduction of complexity, the decentralization, so there won't be a high dependence on a single trusted entity, the improvement of the availability of assets and funds, increase in the transparency of transaction records that uh, will be visible not only for one institution but for all the participants in the network, and also the reduction of operational and financial risks in part. So now um, I will talk about the challenges of this new technology, the ethical and societal challenges. First, I would like to mention the security risks so in the distributed ledgers, we have a lot of nodes, and that also means a lot of points of entry for malicious actors, and they could compromise the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the ledger. And as I said, the security is assured by these cryptographic tools, and they are actually very sec secure, nowadays, but we don't know how the te technology will advance. So maybe in the future, there will be a new technology that can, can rent this distributed ledgers to be less secure. And that's especially a huge issue if we have a lack of an IT governance framework that could, for example, act quickly in case of security issues, for example, cyber attack. Um, and also a problem would be the traceability. It is actually a very important requirement to prevent um, illegal activities such as money laundering or terrorist financing, but this can also be used against privacy and confidentiality of information. And another 
problem would be that these cryptographic um, tools are, can, are also vulnerable to being bypassed. Bypass mechanisms are, for example, if a person accidentally give away, gives away the key or if there are deficiencies in the software code. So other risks are associated with the legality of a field activities. Since this technology is very new, there is a less certainty about an arrangement's legal basis. So people uh, still don't know about the legality of certain activities. It is not as well established as for more traditional systems. It is also still not sure um, how to apply this technology to existing processes. For example, how we would apply this technology in case of theft or fraud or transactions that happen outside of the blockchain but have an impact on it. And also due to the decentralization, and that is a legal risk, a risk because it threatens a central entity that is trusted and that is in position of control. For example, if the blockchain introduces a new currency, such as the Bitcoin, the problem would be that it would threaten the supremacy of governments in managing the monetary system. So we wouldn't have a high regulation. And another problem would be the issue of CITES. That is, uh, every contract and asset needs a location in order to apply a legal jurisdiction. Nowadays, if we have an asset that is not materialized, uh, the location would be the, uh, where the register is held. And if we have a network of nodes, the register will be distributed across many nodes, which would make it difficult to define a location to apply a legal jurisdiction. Other financial and societal challenges would be first the use case cost benefit. As I previously said, there are a lot of prognoses saying that we can save a lot of money with this new technology. However, we have to take in into consideration that just to uh, introduce this technology and install the system, there that would generate a lot of costs, and we have we it's we have uh, we don't know if it's really worth it. Um, additionally. It's also very challenging to find budget to finance these um, blockchain projects. Another problem would be the governance and regulation because we will need an entity that is in charge of the blockchain. So who can permit uh, which are the participants of the blockchain, for example, or who can also permit uh, which transactions are transparent to who? So we still don't know that. And there could be also future economic challenges because if um, we have this new technology in the economy, there will be in the future a lot of automated contract tools and that could lead to, macroeconomic, uh, to new macroeconomic conditions and for example, to a severe liquidity. So for those who don't know, the liquidity is the degree to which an asset or security can be sold or bought quickly in the market without uh, losing the asset's price. So taking into consideration all the points that I mentioned, the risks and the challenges, I've brought a few points that would be very important for a value-sensitive design approach. So first, the system should be desired to require minimum knowledge of individual users. For example, there should be a minimum number of choices and configurations and a clear feedback to prevent cyber attack. Also, if other devices such as smartphones are used, the secure had, uh, security has to be assured, for example, uh, making not making possible that keys and credentials are visible in other applications. And also, the ledger should require the wide network of servers, uh, for example, in case of network outages. And the payment authorization should be centralized in a hardware that is secure against attack. 
Uh, and also important is that we should not just rely on these cryptographic tools, but also think on additional tools that could have, uh, help improve the security. And regarding the regulation, and there are two ways that uh, we can use to regulate these blockchains. First would be via legal code. That is when we apply obligations, for example, to an institution that is in charge of the blockchain. That is a problem in case that the blockchain is, for example, not um, permissioned. So we wouldn't have this entity that is in charge of the blockchain. An alternative would be to just regulate the businesses that deal with this particular blockchain. And via technical code, technical code is a set of rules that uh, to rule the operation of the algorithms that are encoded by the software of the blockchain. And that is um, the software and protocols that are ruled with this technical code. So that was my presentation. Now we can come to the discussion if you have a few questions. <laughs>